four years ago she was working as a trained accountant in a corporate firm then she resigned to become a full-time commercial farmer with a land size of about four acres this week on the Ghanaian farmer i tell the story of martha pounds she's the ceo of zoe farms and fisheries limited in a community or a district called Tororo in eastern Uganda. This is the Guardian Farmer. My name is Enyonam and wherever you're watching us from get interactive, subscribe, share and let's hear from you. I'm going for a quick breather. Martha is somewhere here in the tomatoes working. I'd invite her to join me to share her journey as a farmer and why she left the comfort of her air-conditioned office to be on the field. I'll be right back after this. <laughs> All right, so here we have Marta. I just caught up with her pruning her tomatoes. Marta, Marta Pounds. I hope today you'll give me some pounds to go back to Ghana with. Definitely. <laughs> how have you been? I'm fine. How are you? Great. How is Ghana? Ghana is, you know, amazing. I'm you should visit us one and of so these. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Marta, yes. what is a trained accountant doing in this hot sun? Uh, a trained accountant is doing her, her thing actually farming is my passion that's why i had to leave my big job to come and join farming mm. yes yes when others see farming as a job for people who are retiring yes. or a job for the uneducated what do you make of farming what do i make of farming mm -hmm. you know there is a saying that says that mm -hmm. feature the feature billionaires are farmers mm. so i decide to to also join the billionaires club ah give me five <laughs> <laughs> that's great so tell me in which year did you make that decision mm. to resign to become a farmer actually in 2020 i decided to leave my job to come <laughs> and join farming because i saw i was earning more than my job mm. yes so I, I i make that big decision though it was a tough one mm. but i don't regret leaving okay I'm making that decision okay yes okay now when you resign mm. did you start off immediately or you had to take time do a few research visit some farms before you start off actually um more inspiration i get it from watching youtube channels ah okay so in me I knew I would make it because if you watch other people's stories, they are not far from my story. At all. Yeah, so I, I, I don't regret mm. the decision I took. Okay. Yes. Now, here, you have about four acres, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Now, you are into mixed farming mm. on these four acres. Exactly. Run me through some of the vegetables that you have here. Oh, okay. Um, at Zoe Farm, yes. uh, we have tomatoes. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have different types, varieties of tomatoes. Okay. We have eggplants. Mm -hmm. We grow cucumber. Okay. We grow uh, collard. Mm. Uh, in Uganda here, we call it sukuma week. Right. Yeah, we grow onion mm. and so many others. And I, I heard some pigs making noise. <laughs> now, tell me about the livestock. You have cow, you yes. have pigs, yes, yes. you have chickens. I have fish. Okay. Yes. Rabbit tree. Yeah, I have rabbit. Oh, my. And goat. Mm -hmm. I have uh, juniper. Okay. I have uh, turkeys. Okay. Yeah. Now, the question is, mm. most farmers, yes. if they are starting off, mm. they focus on one particular thing yes, yes. and some might forever do that yes. not switching but you as a new farm a new baby yes. a new billionaire in the making <laughs> you went straight into mixed farming what informed that decision uh, mixed farming uh, you know I am a vegetable grower like I started with vegetables okay so and uh, I decided to go organic mm. so and you know now spending money on fertilizers and so on mm -hmm. I decide to get into other other sectors livestock uh -huh. mm. so the poultry comes in yes the, 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 the goats coming mm -hmm. and the pigs coming mm. so i get fertilizer mm. from all that mm. to to make my vegetables look like oh this. Yes. that's that because great exactly production uh -huh, yes. okay yes. now do you remember how much it took you to start your journey and how did you come by the funding was it loan was it from husband family or how did you raise the money actually raising the money um 
uh, with my story yes. how I started farming. Yes. Uh, in my small backyard where I stay in town, mm -hmm. I had a small backyard garden mm -hmm. of vegetables. Mm. So I would sell some. I would sell some of my vegetables. Mm. So I would save some money, mm -hmm. and from that money, I. Uh, I hired some land mm. somewhere, just a small piece, mm. and I hired a boy who mm -hmm. take care of the of the vegetables. Okay. So from that land I hired, I made a lot of money, Ooh. and hence the decision of me leaving my job. Because okay. whenever I would come back from work, I would get the boy has sold a lot of vegetables. So the savings I make from that mm. that piece of mm -hmm. land. I, I decided to tell my husband mm. I want to go and start something big in the village. Mm. Yeah, and I had saved that as a, a sum of five million. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. So from a backyard, make a lot of money saved, and then you move to a bigger place. Exactly. Okay. Mm. Now, the kind of land you have here mm -hmm. versus what you do. Yes. How do you manage to make sure that you do everything coherently? How do I manage yes. to do everything? So I have workers okay. uh, who, who I apportion work. Right. I have some who help me in the vegetable mm -hmm. garden. Then I have others who work in the livestock. I have others in the fish okay. farm. Okay. Yes. So in total, mm. how many permanent and temporal staff? I have uh, five permanent workers. Okay. Yes. And then the temporal staff, I, I employ women mm. around the village okay. who come. Mm. do some work then mm -hmm. I pay them okay yes. now one unique thing I also saw mm. especially with these tomatoes yes. this tray I don't know what you call it what do you call this thing this is trellising trellising yes. is mostly done in greenhouse yes, yes. but it's an open field yet you are adopting the style of trellising why um why we are doing this yes you know when tomatoes get on the ground they are we have pests and diseases yes. on ground. Yes. So to to prevent the pests, and we have to raise them mm -hmm. so that uh, they don't get affected. Okay. Uh, or infected by the diseases. Right. Yeah, that's why we are we are doing this. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, when it comes to pest management, yes. because I'm told at times one pest can move from this vegetable and go to the other. Yes. How do you prevent it so um, that you don't mix things up? Yeah. So preventing the pest. And diseases yes like you don't own like on such such a space yes you don't grow the same type of crop okay that's why here in this line we yes. have tomatoes the yes. other line we have eggplant yes so the disease that would have affected the the what the eggplant yeah would not affect the land. tomatoes yeah the pest the, the pest for for tomatoes don't affect the aubergines yes, exactly. okay yeah the, so that's why you see this line we have tomatoes mm -hmm. the other side we have uh, the, the eggplant, yes. the cucumber, and like then, that. Yes, and then we have cucumber and all that. Yes. Okay, so, but do you at a point switch, let's say you move aubergine to this side and then you yes. move tomatoes to that side? Yeah. So, we don't permanently okay. like, grow. Mm -hmm. Like now here we have tomatoes. Yes. The next season, mm -hmm. we shall put the tomatoes where the cucumbers mm -hmm. were, And mm -hmm. the cucumbers come. Come, inside. okay. And so, we do crop rotation. Right, yes. okay. Yes. One question is, what you do, vegetables are water-loving plants. Yes, yes. And so, in the absence of that, you will not be able to farm all year. Yes, yes. So, how do you assess water to be able to grow these vegetables? So, uh, on my farm, mm -hmm. I realized I have a problem of water. Okay. So, we dug an, an, under, an underground tunnel. Okay. Uh, and we, we get underground water. Yes. We pump it in one in one spot. Poly tank. Uh -huh, yeah. mm. So the poly tank mm -hmm. uh, supplies to. Mm. We have different water points mm. in, in different places. Okay. Yeah, so okay. That is how we are Good for you. So water is sorted. Yes. One big problem for farmers yes. has to do with managing or supervising staff. Yes. yes. Even men are struggling. Yes. How much more a woman? How do you go about managing? supervising workers to assure at the end of the day mm. work is done effectively and successfully so on my farm yes i have a farm manager okay. who has to report to me mm -hmm. he gives me weekly reports mm. on how the farm is running mm. so that is how i manage mm -hmm. so, but i also supervise mm. them mm. i see like I, I get to see what they are doing mm. you don't just leave them to do whatever exactly. you have to come and see what they are doing okay yes. okay tell me about marketing because it cost you a lot of money to do this. Yes. How did you get people to buy? Mm -hmm. And also, when it comes to transportation of these vegetables and livestock, do you take to them or the buyers bring their own vehicles to pick them up? How do you find your buyers? 
my buyers i get them from town mm -hmm. like in the nearby town mm. in the market mm -hmm. i have women who come and buy vegetables from me even other village people around mm. the village community mm -hmm. comes and buys from me mm. but again mm. we have our transport the the, the tricycle mm -hmm. that we use to transport those ones who want to who want delivery mm. in town mm. we deliver in different a uh, hotels okay yes okay yeah so we deliver to them mm. uh, but the ladies come on the farm mm. and they they do the selection of what they want mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. go okay now all these vegetables that i see yes. do they all mature at the same time um actually we do the zigzag method which is like <laughs> the zigzag method uh -huh. like you you don't grow the vegetables at the same time okay as you are growing uh, this week yes like after two weeks you have to put another because we don't want to run out of supply oh. you understand mm -hmm. so that is the zigzag as these ones are maturing yes. the other ones are, are growing okay yes. okay so it means you have to live like four weeks in between yeah two to, to four, four weeks. weeks okay yes. okay yes. that's great yeah. my next question is uh, mainly has to do with um sales you know there are a lot of times when all farmers are growing and yes. also growing yes. there are a lot of commodities in the markets yes. at the same time yes. so it drop uh, the prices of food yes. as a businesswoman an accountant for that matter who loves money <laughs> how do you you know manage to make sure that you you don't make loss mm -hmm. by the end of the day you make your your profit so normally what we do here yes we time the season okay uh, we, in the season where there, there is a lot of produce mm -hmm. on the market, mm. we, we don't overgrow because you know when there is a lot at the market, you, you make low sales. Of course, you of course, yes. So we limit our our production. Yes. So we time the, uh, the dry season mm. where no farmer is growing. Okay. That is when we come in. And you know, during that time, mm. prices of these vegetables are very high. They are scarce. Ah, okay. Yes. So, what time of the year do you consider as dry season? And how long does it last? At the beginning of the year, let's say January, uh -huh. from December, okay. to January, mm -hmm. February. Mm -hmm. Normally, we, we we term it as dry season. Dry season. Okay. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Ah. So that's the CEO of Zoe Farms and Fishes Limited. Her name is <laughs> Madame Pounce. So I am going back to Ghana with a lot of pounds in my pocket. Because for you to be called pounds, it means that she's part of the billionaires club, you know. <laughs> I'm going for a quick bit. And when I come back, we'll be wrapping up on this beautiful and inspiring story of Martha. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so thanks for staying here to watching The Ghanaian Farmer. And my beautiful guest is Marta Pounce. And um, she's been telling me this beautiful journey of hers into becoming a farmer. Now, Marta, we find ourselves now in the pig pen. Yes. Let's talk briefly about the variety or the breed yes, of yes. pigs you have here. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, inside here, mm. I have the Cambra. Okay. Yes, uh, the white one. There. Yes. And then we have a mixture of the Cambra mm. and then the white large. Okay. Yes. So in total, how many pigs do you have? I have a total of 50 pigs. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. The benefit of mixed farming is that one, I mean, they leverage on another. Yes. Now, yes. when you harvest your vegetables, yes. what becomes of the stalks and the leaves and all those things? What becomes of them? So the, 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 the wastes that we get from our vegetables, exactly. we feed them on the pigs. Okay. Yeah, like the, the cabbages. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we give them to the pigs. Okay. Yeah. Now, you also have poultry. Yeah, we do have poultry. Okay. Yes. Is it the foreign birds or? We have the local birds. Only? Uh, yeah, um, we also do croilers. Okay. Though the people around love local birds because ah. they are so tasty. So it means them. that your market yes. and where your farm is situated determines what sort of livestock or animal you should rear. Is that not it? Yes, yes. Okay. Exactly. Now, I also realize you have some cattle. I have a cow. Okay. That I get milk from. Mm. Yes. So it's it's a fresh and cow. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. Now let me go back to vegetable. I'll come back here. Yes. Among all the veggies that you have, mm. which one is the fastest moving? I mean, on daily basis, you are supplying. 
um actually the collards oh, okay that my week yes yes it, that one goes on a daily basis mm. yeah they bite daily and it's fast growing you okay. grow it in three weeks you harvest it ah. and as it co- it continues to grow you harvest okay yes okay mm. sukuma week yes <laughs> <laughs> now tell me about your weekly sales averagely so from my vegetable mm-hmm. farm mm-hmm. i make a I make from 500 mm-hmm. to 700,000 mm-hmm. weekly. Mm-hmm. Yes, for mm-hmm. the supplies of the vegetables. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, since you started this journey, have you had a challenge yet? Um, yes. And there are some and of course when you're doing something, mm-hmm. there are some they get challenges. Okay. And uh, also uh, yeah, mm-hmm. the challenges are mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. So sometimes mm-hmm. you know like uh, the pests and diseases yes. and you know we go we go organic. Okay. You are forced to use the, the chemicals that we don't want to use, use. on the on the vegetables mm-hmm. uh when the organic one refuses mm-hmm. totally. Mm-hmm. So the pests and diseases though we are trying to control mm-hmm. yes mm. and also sometimes the weather you can like when there is heavy rain mm. uh, with a lot of water mm-hmm. washes, mm. washing away your vegetables ah. you, you find you're making losses yeah. yes and also sometimes there's scorching sun ah yes look at this fine skin <laughs> <laughs> always on yes. the sun yes. but tell me mm-hmm. in this journey that yes. you started mm-hmm. this few years mm-hmm. hasn't been rewarding Hey, so much. Hey, <laughs> tell me just a few. Yes, so from my from my farm. Yes. Uh, I've I've been able to, of course, I bought for myself a car uh-huh. from my farm. Yes. And you know, like saving. I helped my husband build the house. Okay. You know, the beautiful. Is it that beautiful one I see there? Exactly. Okay. Yes. So, and also, uh, from the money we make from the farm, mm-hmm. uh, we give back to the community. Okay. Yes. Yes. We go look for women who. Mm-hmm. Who are struggling mm. and also we train women mm. uh on to get the skills mm. that uh on on the farm so that okay. they can start on their own their own yes yes okay. so we're also helping the women mm-hmm. in the community like mm. they engage more in farming okay yes okay Martha. Mm. this has been very very good i'm yes. happy yes. about the achievement you have chalked in these few years yes. but then mm. What do friends, colleagues who have heard that you've resigned from your corporate office and yes. this is where you find, what do they say? Have Actually, you heard some weird stories? Yes. Um, after me resigning my job, people thought um, my ancestors <laughs> after me. <laughs> you don't mean it. Yes. Like, you know, like people don't expect you to leave your pay, your good paying job to come and engage in farming exactly. you know like people have a bad mindset that yeah. farming is mm. for the poor mm. like there is nothing you can gain mm. out of farming mm. but actually they've come to realize that actually they themselves they are wrong mm. the perception they had towards me uh is they are wrong because they have seen my life has changed mm. totally mm. uh yeah i'm not i'm not the same mm. how i used to be when i was mm. in office mm. Uh, when you compare that time and now, I there's a big same. difference. So they even admire me, like ah. they also come to the farm to see what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Yes. That's great. Now, my, my next uh, take would be on the fish you do. Yes. Is yes, it yes. catfish or tilapia? I do tilapia and catfish. Is it, um? do you dig a pond or you have a river that you do in? No, we dug a pond. Okay. We, we have a total of 11 ponds. Mm. Yeah, so we, we, we did manual digging. Mm. I got people in the, in the village mm-hmm. and they dug. So we, we got a water source. Mm. The water source connects to all the ponds. That's how we get mm. our water. Okay. Yes. All right. Mm. Then the next thing would be, mm. as a woman, you are in a male-dominated kind of field. Yes, yes. And so how do you ensure that things, the management of the farm mm. is always on point? Managing family versus managing business. How do you manage the two? Just like I told you earlier, um, you know, you cannot run this thing alone. Exactly. So I, I got uh, some professional experts, mm. like in agriculture, mm-hmm. Yes, so I have my manager mm. who is learned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he, he advises me on mm-hmm. and also trains my, my your my, staff. My staff. Mm. So that's how I am managed. Okay. And I just like I told you, mm. he, he writes me weekly reports. Okay. So you, you have to know what is wrong on the farm and uh, what is right. Uh, so fr- f- from the weekly reports, mm-hmm. I can know that the farm is doing well and maybe the farm is not doing well mm. from the weekly mm. reports. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm. Mata. 
finally yes. we are about wrapping up our video yes those who think that staying running away from your country to go to abroad yes. is better than staying here yes. to do farming yes. what do you have to say about that um we don't really need to go abroad to to make money you can make money even in your own village mm. you only have to to have the passion mm -hmm. like i encourage people to to do what they love mm. me i loved farming right mm -hmm. from childhood mm. and uh i thought i would dodge it but my love for farming made me like for uh, as i was in office i would also do some backyard farming mm. small mm. though not like that like, i mm. realized that mm. indeed god wanted me to be a farmer exactly and that's why i had to mm. live so mm. do not ignore what you love doing mm. you don't have to go to another country to make money mm -hmm. that that passion you have can make you more mm. than what is outside there. I see. You understand? How involved are young people in farming in, 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 in Uganda? Yes. How involved are they? Are they really involved? Yeah, as a trend now, like people are embracing farming. Ah. Uh, young people like me. Mm. Yeah, because now, like you, mm -hmm. you inspire us mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. So they, they, we are inspiring many. Mm -hmm. uh, when someone sees me doing this mm -hmm. and I'm getting money, mm -hmm. they, they would also love to try. Okay. And out of trying, they mm -hmm. make it. Okay. Now, yes. finally, let's touch on your tourism. Yes. You said you are tourism to the farming. Yes. So what do you do when it comes to tourism? Do you open the farm for so, foreigners to visit or what is the package? Yes, when it... we do welcome visitors. Mm -hmm. uh, we have... Um, we have a travel agency, a okay. travel company called Tutamble Safari. Right. So whoever wants to come to the farm, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we 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 bring them to the farm, mm. and also, uh, not only at the farm, mm. we take them around the country. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, viewers. So that's it. Marta Pounce, the CEO or of mm, Zoe Vegetables. It's a vegetables, right? Yeah, Zoe, Zoe Farms. Zoe Farms. Yes. And she's doing amazing things here in yes. Tororo. Yes. <laughs> I hope I got it right. <laughs> in Tororo. Mm -hmm. So if you're out there being it in Uganda, in Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, wherever you are, mm -hmm. if you want to listen to stories that impart, that inspire, you want to learn something, you can come by and learn from her. Now, I realize that you use basic things for your farm structure. Yes, yes. You you use wood, you use a, a bit of bricks. Mm -hmm. What went into let last one? I, I know I said last one. You know my can talk. <laughs> what went into this concept? Mm. You know a lot of people spend heavy money exactly. on putting farm mm. houses together. But this concept, how did you come by it? So mm. like uh setting up these structures, mm -hmm. you don't need a lot of money. Mm. You use the available materials uh, around mm. to to set up your your structures mm. actually so mm. we, we 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 have some trees we, mm. we have grown mm -hmm. down mm. so those very trees we use them to get timber mm. yes and then some like the iron sheets we yeah. use the small money mm -hmm. like you can use to buy, buy the iron but most of the materials are locally are, are within within here Thank you very much, Martha. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yes. I truly appreciate you. Yes. Well done. Keep inspiring young people in Uganda. Yes. Definitely. I definitely would come back. Thank you. But when I'm coming, you have to give me tilapia to eat. Exactly. Thank you very much. <laughs>